Um, I want to present you our um, results of screwed caps and uh, what's going on with the screwed caps. So the topics of this is why did the first generation of threaded caps fail? The second is the set, I want to introduce you to the second generation of thread caps, and especially the Bicon cup. Uh, I speak a, bit, a, a little bit about the clinical features of the Bicon cup uh, concerning bone remodeling, uh, pelvic osteotomies, and high hip center. And uh, at the end, I want to present you our data uh, about the 10 years retrospective study of the biconical threaded cup. So the first generations of CUP have a bad outcome. So you see um, just the literature between 17 and 10 years, 10 and 17 years, you have um, a survival rate of uh, 50 to uh, 70, 80 uh, percent. So this was uh, not good enough. And uh, the reasons for this uh, poor results have been migration, instability, osteolysis, polyvare, because of uh, a poor design, so we had uh, in the first generation smooth surfaces with no uh, osseo integration. Uh, we have open cup floors with an extensive contact uh, between the poly and the um, bone with osteolysis. And we have a poorly uh, cutting threads, um, so the primary fixation was impaired. So the second generation of the threaded caps um, uh, started with uh, in '85 with uh, this all conical threaded cup, uh, w which was done with uh, pure titanium. Uh, the cup floor was closed. Uh, we had an increased cupping uh, ability of the threads. Uh, we have bioactive surfaces with a roughness of five microns. And this um, uh, cup was redesigned to a biconical threaded cup uh, and introduced in uh, 80, uh, in 93. So this biconical threaded cup uh, uh, was a double conus um, to save bone stock. We had more sharp cutting threads. Uh, we had a very improved locking mechanism of the polyliner with a four level locking mechanism. Uh, we have this biological fixation, and we have a sectoral opening floor for bone grafting, uh, and also a sectoral shutter. And of course, you have a press fit fixation. So the current view of this um, um, bicon cup is like that in a standard version, and also with an osteoporotic per, uh, version where the lamina are a little bit uh, larger. And um, there was a removal, a removal of these indentations because uh, uh, they have the potential risk of a shell fracture, as you can see here in one case. Let's go to the second topic, to the clinical features. Um, I want to address bone remodeling in primary total hip replacements. What's about high hip center? The next presentation will about that. So maybe I can give you, I have found it, and after, uh, uh, I will to speak a little bit about uh, pelvic osteotomies. Bone remodeling, you see here a female three and a half months after the operation. And as you see, there's, there are gaps on the floor of the cup and on the cranial part. And you see here six and a half years, so these gaps have been closed nicely. Uh, what's about high hip center, secondary to congenital hip disease? There was, um, you see here, in a, a case like that. And you see the reconstruction on the right side was okay, but on the left side we have still uh, a high hip center, which was not so nice in this case. Um, we, I was looking for uh, literature, and there's a very recent uh, level three study uh, of this high hip center uh, using the Zweimüller biconal cup. You will see it later. And um, there were 34 versus 70 and they found no difference in polyvare rates uh, after 15 years, and the couple of Meyer cup survivorship rates was the same. So um, you see also in high hip centers, polyethylene wear and survivorship was comparable with anatomical position cups with bicon cups in this, uh, in this paper. Um, a very special situation is to, uh, of the pelvic osteotomies, you see here uh, a case uh, seven years after Chiari pelvic osteotomies, 
and you see um, in the cranial part there's a less of um, a, a, a lack of um, bone, and you see after 12 years this was closed. Uh, if you have a big um, big gap in this region, you can uh, screw up uh, with with bone from the head, as you can see here, and this is an 11 year post op uh, picture. So I come to the last part of my presentation. This is the 10 years retrospective study uh, of the biconical threaded cut. And you see here we have done 412 operations and the follow-up was of 232. And you see the exclusion criteria. Uh, the statistics about between sex and the woman and man and the diagnosis, you see idiopathic uh, osteoarthritis, the main part. You are familiar with that. But uh, what is, uh, again, uh, about bone remodeling in this case, and uh, I want to stress out this triangular cranial gap. Second, I want to um, look for the distance of the acetabular floor of new bone formation to the lamella and atroph um, atrophy around the cap. So let's go first to the triangular cranial Cap, uh, gap. Uh, we found in this series that uh, in 182 we had no gap, but there was an existing gap of 50. And uh, at the follow up of uh, 10 years, there was a completely uh, filling up of 36, partly 12, no in one, and increasing a gap in one um, uh, case. So I show you here um, an, uh, an example. So you see, this was um, post-operative and this was uh, 10 years after. Uh, what's about the acetabular floor, the gaps here in this region? We had in uh, 47 cases, we had this um, phenomenon. And uh, the result was that um, we had a completely filling up in 42 uh, without uh, doing any uh, bone grafting, partly in two, newly formed in two cases. You see also an example, uh, five months and 10 years um, after the operation. What's about the new bone formation uh, around the lamelle? And you see that uh, if you detect it, you see this uh, nice um, bone formation around the lamella. And this is a histological uh, part of that from Lind Professor Lindner. Atrophy is very rare, but you can see that. You see here. Uh, in this case, that uh, post-operatively there was this dense uh, bone uh, in the cranial part, and because of changing of the biomechanics, it disappeared. So uh, when you summarize the X-ray analysis of these uh, cases, we had the situation unchanged in 91, increasing bone formation in uh, 135, uh, atrophy in 2, implant removal uh, because of infection fracture in 2, and uh, a loosening radiologically it was seen in three cases. So the Kaplan-Meier survivorships of all these uh, cases was uh, 98%.6. Uh, <clears throat> so all the results that in 232 patients, uh, we have used only exclusively the biconical cup. Uh, no cup was cemented. Ten surgeons have done this uh, work uh, with different levels of uh, experience. We had one fracture, one infection, and three loosening radiologically. So the conclusion of uh, this cup will be that the biconical cup uh, in our hands, in our experience, uh, is an achieving excellent clinical uh, is achieving excellent clinical and radiological results at a minimum of 10 years. It can be used in almost all indications in primary total hip atroplasty. And according to our results, the screwed cup is a valid alternative to any hemispheric cup. Thank you very much. <laughs>